Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It is officially Christmas in Oxford, or at least that's what the weather thinks. Coming up, we'll take a look at the current winter temperatures and see if we'll able, be able to build a snowman tomorrow. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Annabeth Polakovich. And I'm Sarah Kate Caliguire. It was an exciting afternoon in Oxford as snow fell in the area. But with colder temperatures expected tonight, Lafayette County is under a winter weather advisory. Stormwatch reporter Cameron Sidley is live outside of Bishop Hall with a look at the snow. Cameron? Yeah, thanks guys. I am live outside Bishop Hall right now where it was an ex exciting day in Oxford as snow fell for the first time this year. As you take a look behind me, you can see the snow stuck pretty well, making campus look like a bit of a winter wonderland. As we take a look at our current weather headlines, you can see Oxford is under a winter weather, weather advisory until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. There is a hard freeze warning, meaning you should bundle up and make sure you're staying warm. There is also freezing drizzle, sleet, and snow like we saw earlier today. If we take a look at this video from earlier outside Bishop Hall, you can see it was snowing quite a lot outside. And according to my Snapchat stories, many students were pretty excited about this snowfall. Of course, you need to stay careful walking and driving in this weather. You know this weather, of course, brings dangerous road conditions, including low visibilities and bridges and low-lying areas will freeze, so you need to stay cautious of that. For more road information, please call 511. Coming up on my extended forecast, I'll let you know if we'll see any more snow this week. Reporting live outside Bishop Hall, Cameron Sidley, Newswatch Ole Miss. Thanks, Cameron. The university sent out a mass email explaining that the Oxford campus is operating under normal hours despite the winter weather conditions. The email said that the crisis action team is continuing to monitor the, the weather and will notify the community if anything changes. Oxford students are bundling up to brace the freezing temperatures outside, but staying warm isn't the only concern. Newswatch reporter Kira Bedinecci shows us how some students are doing what they can to battle illness during this winter weather. Sam Bomarito is one of many Ole Miss students bracing the shocking cold in Oxford this week. After living in this area for most of his life, Bomarito is ready and prepared for the weather ahead. Well, I've always lived in this area, so it's kind of like I'm used to it at this point. I have the changing temperatures from one day being kind of warm, next day being freezing cold. I'm used to that, so I think I've kind of grown to experience it a lot. So. Knowing that the drastic changes in weather have the potential to make anybody sick, Bomarito has his own ways of preventing illness from sticking. I just try to dress as warm as possible. I try to usually try to dress for the coldest possible. That way I'm not, I'd rather be too warm than too cold. So I try to get layered up and then just expect, you know, the worst. With the weather in Oxford changing drastically, it is important to find new and effective ways to get ahead and prevent yourself from getting sick. Hunter Matthews is a pharmacy student at Ole Miss and thinks experts are prepared for a rise in patients at this time of the year. Well, I think the biggest prevention method you should do is definitely um, get your flu shot. Like, since it's now the peak of flu season, I'd still go ahead and go to, like, a Red Med or even, like, the medical center, like, on campus and just go get a flu shot. It's it's not bad, they charge a bursar, but that would be the biggest thing I would say that could prevent. However, heading to the doctor isn't the only option at this time of year. Matthews also thinks the small steps matter and believes early prevention is key. In the back of their minds, but at this point I would think that they're so, like especially at a school, like a campus, like people get sick all the time, so they're probably used to a big influx of like people getting sick and regardless. But I, I guarantee you they're, they're at least prepared. Students should take advantage of the on-campus health center and focus on ways to support the immune system as the weather cools it down. Kira Beninecci, Newswatch, Ole Miss. If you're feeling sick, the on-campus health center is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Walk-ins are welcome. Today, the university sent out an alert about scammers trying to impersonate Ole Miss employees. The scammers will create Gmail accounts with actual employee names, then try to communicate with their colleagues. 
These schemes will often involve several message exchanges to build trust. The criminal will eventually ask for sensitive information or try to persuade the recipient to perform some action on their behalf. The university reminds students to pay close attention to the sender email addresses and be particularly cautious when communicating with an email that does not end in olmis.edu. Housemethod.com named the Graduate Oxford one of the best hotels for design lovers because of its atmosphere and style. Newswatch reporter Chance Robertson has the story. Housemethod.com called the Graduate Oxford one of the best hotels because of its playful mix between old school preppy style and modern taste that can be appreciated by all. The owner of Something Southern Design and Furnishings explains what exactly these terms mean. They have a lot of old textbooks from the 50s and 60s. Um, decorating and it's just a, a really throwback look to a special time in, in a lot of people's college lives. I'm standing outside the Graduate Hotel where Mark just gave us his professional opinion from a designer's point of view. Now Mark has also been a guest at the Graduate Hotel and here is his perspective from the customer's point of view. That's what made it so inviting as you went into the room and the colors were really bright back to the the colors of the 50s and 60s where you have your your greens and your golds and your bright pinks and some of the rooms have the old plaids in them so it was just a real warm cozy feeling in the room and again a, a throwback to that to that era the graduate has plenty of artwork and pictures that certainly call back the nostalgia of that era and the article also made a point to mention cabin 82 and its excellent food chance robertson newswatch old miss if you'd like to book a stay at The Graduate, you can reserve a room through their website, graduatehotels.com. Thanksgiving is almost a week away and families are already thinking about what food to prepare. Newswatch reporter Brianna Bynum tells us about one student's family's traditions. Nancy Phipps is a student at Ole Miss who says she's looking forward to Thanksgiving dinner. And my mom will buy a turkey and we'll do it at home and make it and sometimes my dad deep fries it, which is so good. With the egg bowl being in Oxford on Thanksgiving, some families are choosing to purchase their meals instead of making them at home. Blake Hill owns Honey Baked Ham in Oxford, and she says business has been booming for months in preparation for Thanksgiving. Yeah, actually taking reservations as early as late September. We're slammed. Um, we're working 10 hours plus a day. My husband and I are anyway, not everybody else, but um, we're taking orders, preparing hams and turkeys. Phipps says although she enjoys home cooked food, some years her family buys food from places like Honey Baked Ham. Years if she's got to go into work at like three, then we will go to um, our nearest grocery store in Ingalls and purchase some pre-done turkey. Hill says people who want to order pre-made meals should do so no later than this weekend. Brianna Bynum, News Watch Ole Miss. In order to prepare for Thanksgiving, the Honey Baked Ham Store will have special hours this Monday. They'll be open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. With the holiday season starting up, many of you may be looking for some gift ideas for friends and family. News Watch reporter Julia Blake Anderson checks out the Christmas pottery sale to see how the mad, mad daubers are getting into the holiday spirit. This week, student Rosa Salas is helping the Ole Miss mud daubers run their annual Christmas pottery sale. The student-run organization is made up of ceramic students like Rosa, and they hope this pottery sale will give the Oxford community a peek into what they learn about every day. So it's it's kind of like raising awareness of you know what ceramic art, like that ceramic art world looks like, and trying to like you know bring that part of art into campus in general. I'm here at Meek Hall where the mud divers made their ceramic pieces for the annual Christmas pottery sale and these pieces can take up to three weeks to be completed. It takes a variation of different times depending on like clay bodies but as an advanced ceramic student uh, we make all our own clays, all our own glazes. We fire them ourselves in the bisque fire which is our first firing and then a glaze fire which is our second firing. This event is a way for the mud daubers to fundraise for their organization and give students experience in selling their work. And we put our, all of our work that is done in the classroom. Um, we have from sculptures to balls to cups to teapots. We have all kinds of things. And it's just to raise funds, like I said, for our events that we have throughout the year. Salas wants to encourage students to come check out the Mud Dauber's work, even if they aren't sure they want to buy anything. 
If you are interested in purchasing a piece, the Mud Daubers will be outside of Weir Hall this Thursday and Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Julie Blake Anderson, Newswatch, Ole Miss. And the Mud Daubers aren't the only ones getting into the holiday spirit. The Ole Miss Art Department is planning holiday festivities. Newswatch reporter Kristen Belly is in studio with more on this. Kristen? Thanks, Sarah Kate. That's right, Rebels. The Ole Miss Art Department's annual Holiday Art Gala is right around the corner, and today I talked with two gala committee members about what we can expect to see at this year's event. The Holiday Art Gala, organized by the Ole Miss Art and Art History Department, is an annual event that brings the art community and the Oxford community together. The gala is the kickoff event to mark the beginning of the holiday art market. Josh Brindley, chairman of the gala committee, says that the event helped students showcase their work and shared more information of what to expect from this year's festivities. The Holiday Art Gala is kind of our main fundraising event for the Art and Art History Department. We give students the opportunity to actually submit work. It helps provide some of the things that you see here within this gallery. It's ultimately a way to get our students involved with the community, but then also get the community involved with us. Tyler Barnes, the Collateral and Event Branding Specialist, shared what kind of works the community can expect to see. It'll be primarily student work and it will be a range from ceramics to printmaking to posters, graphic design. You'll have plenty of time, one-stop shop for all your holiday gifts. The annual Holiday Art Gala and Market will be held November 30th through December 2nd at the Oxford Powerhouse. More information about the event is available on OxfordArts.com. Well, that looks awesome. Thanks, Kristen. Coming up, see which media company is supporting CNN's lawsuit against the White House. And find out what the president is arguing. And one fast food restaurant is starting a delivery service. Stay tuned to see which one it is and why we'll have you eating there seven times a day. But first, Cameron Sidley has your first look at the current weather conditions. Hey Rebels, happy Wednesday. As we take a look at our current weather headlines, you can see there is going to be a drop in temperatures, there is a current hard freeze warning, and of course a chance of snow tonight. As we take a look at our radar image, you can see there isn't a lot of activity over Oxford right now, but coming up that won't be the case. Stay tuned for my extended forecast and I'll tell you everything you need to know for the week. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text-to-emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not OK to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hi, Krista. Take you, Jamie, to be my wife. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. A new fire has started east of Los Angeles and is threatening vegetation and homes in the area.
The Sierra Fire in Fontana is 50 miles from LA, increasing the death toll in the state to 51. This latest fire has consumed 147 acres of land, according to San Bernardino County authorities. The fire started at 9.30 p.m. yesterday, and by 8 o'clock this morning, the fire was 75% contained. These two large fires have outsourced first responders in LA and Ventura counties. Today, Fox News announced it would file an amicus brief in the case inside with CNN and their lawsuit against the White House. CNN journalist Jim Acosta had his hard pass revoked last week after he angered President Trump in a news conference. This hard pass allows White House journalists to enter the grounds for briefings and live reports. CNN and Acosta then sued the president and senior White House aides yesterday, asking a court to force the White House to reinstate Acosta's access or go before a judge. Both corporations referred to freedom of press and speech when making statements about the lawsuit. A hearing for the case was set for this afternoon. In response to this lawsuit, the White House asserts that it can pick and choose which journalists are given a permanent pass to cover it, according to a court filing by the Justice Department today. The lawsuit against President Trump and the White House alleged that the, that the ban was a violation of CNN and Acosta's First and Fifth Amendment rights. The White House states that they possess a broad discretion to limit reporter access to White House buildings and events. Journalism advocates say it could have a chilling effect on news coverage. The Trump campaign is trying to capitalize on the lawsuit and sent out an emailed survey to potential donors with the subject line, CNN sues help Trump win. First Lady Melania Trump is calling for a national security advisor to be fired. Yesterday, her office made a public statement saying that White House aide Mira Ricardel no longer deserves the honor of working for President Trump's administration. The First Lady recently clashed with, with Ricardel over a trip to Africa. This intervention sparked speculation that the First Lady is at odds with her husband. Mira Ricardel has not yet made a statement about the controversy. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos is facing another lawsuit. This one claims DeVos Terror. didn't cancel Concerned student debt students owed students by people whose for-profit colleges were shut down. Last month, a federal judge ruled the regulation needed to go into effect immediately. The judge also said DeVos was stalling for more than a year with arbitrary and capricious delays. A California-based legal service nonprofit group filed this new complaint. They say the Education Department is collecting on loans that should be discharged due to a rule from the Obama administration. Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz attacked a jail deputy and grabbed his stun gun. Today, he appeared in court for the incident and is facing charges for fighting with the deputy in a Broward County jail. The preliminary bond was set for $200,000 for both charges, battery on an officer and using a stun gun against a law enforcement officer. These latest charges come after deputies report he put up his middle finger at a detention deputy and then continued to attack. Cruz has been in custody since February 14th. It looks like Chick-fil-A might become a little bit easier for you to get your hands on. The fast food chain is debuting a national delivery service and partnering with DoorDash to offer a home delivery option in more than 1,000 of their restaurants. Participating Chick-fil-A restaurants will deliver everything on their menu to customers within a 10-minute radius. And to celebrate, Chick-fil-A is giving away up to 200,000 free chicken sandwiches if you use the promo code CFA Delivery. That offer is good through November 20th. I love Chick-fil-A. How about you? I know. I'm definitely going to be using that. That's going to be like my new best friend. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, some warm food definitely sounds good right about now, especially with this blizzard we have outside. It definitely does, and I still can't believe that it's snowing outside. And coming up in her extended forecast, Cameron Sidley will let us know if this winter wonderland will continue. Leah! Did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured. But you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever. 
but you can scan important documents now so they survive. Whoa! For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. Hey Rebels, happy Wednesday. As we take a look at our current temperature, you can see it's 28 degrees right, right now. We are having some slight snow showers, like I said earlier, and those winds are making it feel more like in the low 20s. As we take a look at our current radar image, or satellite image, excuse me, we can see we have plenty of coverage over Oxford right now. We will see a little bit of that tonight as we see some slight snow coming in. As we take a look at our current temperatures right now, you can see we have 29 in South Haven and Holly Springs, 28 in Oxford, 33 in both Corinth and Tupelo, so it's pretty cold all around right now. As we take a look at tomorrow's temperatures, good news, it will warm up just a little bit. As we take a look at, we have Oxford at 40, Corinth also at 40, Holly Springs at 41, South Haven at 42, and Tupelo the warmest at 44. As we take a look at tonight's forecast, it'll drop down to about 25 degrees, which again, pretty cold outside, cloudy with those slight winds that will make it even more chilly and a 20% chance of rain. So we will see some snow with that. As we take a look at tomorrow's forecast, like I said earlier, it will warm up just a little bit to 40 degrees, partly cloudy with some decently heavy um, winds and a 10% chance of rain. As we move on to our five-day forecast, you can see that looks like all the snow for the week. We have Friday at 58, Saturday at 63, Sunday at 61, Monday at 51, and Tuesday at 53. So if you plan on driving home this weekend, it's a good time to do it. Back to you guys. Wow, I really hope today's snow will get classes canceled tomorrow. Yeah, possibly. Could lead to that. <laughs> Thanks, Cameron. Well, after a tough loss to IUPUI, see if the Lady Rebels basketball team can get back to winning ways tonight against Temple. And great news for the softball team as Mike Smith's team welcomes five newcomers on National Signing Day. Find out who they are up next on Sports Watch. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sports Watch. I'm AJ Norwood. 
After a tough loss to IUPUI last Friday, the Ole Miss women's basketball team is looking to bounce back against the Temple Owls tonight in the Pavilion. Tonight marks the fifth all-time meeting between the Rebels and the Owls, with the Rebels leading the series 3-1. Last November, the Rebels were able to take a 64-48 victory over the Owls. With the Ole Miss defense ranking in the top half of the SEC in defense, hopefully we can see Coach O lead the team to a victory. Today was National Signing Day for softball, and the Rebels were able to bring in five signees. The first signee for the Rebels was Taylor Backmeyer from Texas. Backmeyer batted an astounding 556 as a junior. The second signee was the, for the Rebels was Mackenzie Barbara from California. During her junior season, she had a fielding percentage of 979. Next up for Ole Miss was Reagan Shane, who had a perfect fielding percentage by the end of her junior season. The Rebels also reeled in Kenzie Coleman, who batted 385 as a sophomore. The final signee for the Rebels was Paige Smith from California. Smith batted 457 while also driving in 41 runs. Switching it over to national football, the NFL has decided to change locations for the much-anticipated matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Rams. The game was originally set to take place in Mexico City, but has now been moved to the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum due to poor field conditions. The decision to move locations has hurt the feelings of many fans. Many players considered not playing if the league opted to keep the game in Mexico City. The game is now set for November the 19th at 8.15 p.m. More in NFL news, Le'Veon Bell has officially been ruled ineligible to play in the NFL this season. Bell had until 4 p.m. yesterday to, to report to the team facility if he wanted to play this year. Pittsburgh Steelers general manager released a statement confirming that Bell did not sign his franchise tender. After being asked about whether or not Bell returns, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin said, so be it. Not signing the tender ultimately lands running back as a free agent, but with the talented running back entering free agency, there will be a team lucky enough to acquire him. That's all I have for you today in sports. Be sure to follow us at Newswatch underscore UM to stay up to date with all things sports. Anna Best, Sarah Kate, back to you. Thanks, AJ. Well, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and that means Macy's is gearing up for their annual parade. The company will have some new inventory this year, so stay tuned to see which new floats they'll be parading around. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. We are Ole Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneered human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are distinguished as a Carnegie R1 top 2.5% research institution. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. Thanksgiving just isn't Thanksgiving without the Macy's Parade. And over 400 children saw some of the new floats yesterday at the Macy's Studio in Moon Aki, New Jersey. Newcomers this year include the Ninja Turtles, Elf on a Shelf, Elf Pets, Kinder Chocolate Factory, and a Splashing Safari Adventure by Kalahari Resorts. Macy's floats take 18 months to design and produce. A total of 26 floats and 56 balloons will be a part of this year's Thanksgiving celebration. The 92nd Annual Parade is expected to draw 3.5 million local spectators and 50 million national viewers. So I hope that it is not this cold as it will be on Thanksgiving Day for those people attending the parade. I totally agree. This weather is kind of miserable right now. It really is. Speaking of weather, what are we looking for tonight and this weekend? So tonight it looks like we'll see some light snow and rain, but 
throughout the next couple days it should start to get warmer so that's something I'm really excited about. Oh, me too. Thanks Cameron. Thank you. Well that's all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Annabeth Polakovic. Be sure to join us here again tomorrow night at 5 and on NewswatchOleMiss.com. I'm Sarah Kate Caliguire. Thank you and good night.